This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I am so excited. I have two wonderful co-founders of Aveline Wine. You may know one of them. That's right, Catherine Powers is here. She's one of the co-founders with her less known partner, Cameron Diaz. Welcome to the Playbook. Thank you, David. Thanks for having us. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Well, I love having entrepreneurs who uh, have no reason to be an entrepreneur. You know, and, you know, because to me, being an entrepreneur almost my entire career after law school, I think about people who are hyper successful in what they do. Like, why would you torture yourself? So my first question to both of you is, you know, it's hard enough to be entrepreneurs. Why are you torturing yourself by creating a business? <laughs> I look at it as sort of an, a creative endeavor, actually. So I think that that's why Catherine and I, uh, matched up so well is because, you know, I think that we both looked at this opportunity in this white space as an opportunity to do something really fun with our friends. And, you know, I'm just, I'm along for the ride, David. Like I, I did a master class with Catherine who obviously has two very successful or three very successful um, ventures already. She has who, what, where, um, first uh, clean skin, skincare line. Um, she has her um, click media, you know, she's a, she's a boss. So I just kind of learned from her and, and took a master course um, as we went along and uh, learned so much from her. But I think we just really did it because we were having a good time doing it, which I think is really important. Yeah. I mean, I think often the best business businesses start from a personal need. So you know, everything that I've developed um, that, that has turned into a success is something that I needed personally. And then, you know, was able to see that others needed that as well. And then it's just about having the follow through to kind of bring that to market and bring that to life. And, um, you know, I think uh, this partnership has been so great because Cameron and I ultimately are just so passionate about this mission, which, which is really to champion a new standard in wine and wine drinking. Um, we learned so much over the last couple of years as wine consumers and students of this uh, craft. And we, we felt compelled to share that with uh, the world and to offer a solution. Um, and that's really what led us to create Aveline. You know, I spend all of my time sort of focused on this millennial and Gen Z consumer and saw her habits changing quite a bit when it came to, you know, wellness from, you know, trading in groceries for organic household products, skincare, personal care. Uh, and Cameron, you know, who outside of her career in film, um, has written two books on the body. She's very deep into the wellness space. Um, and we were just sitting there, honestly, drinking wine. And we, we started to think about like, God, there's no ingredients on this label. Are these, is this just grapes? Like, wait, are they organic? Because everything we put in our body is organic. And that's kind of what started it. And Cameron is such a curious, very detail-oriented person um that you know we just kind of like set her loose on that and <laughs> and i set up the uh the the sort of infrastructure that would ultimately become the oveling business and we went through it day to day together just really learning and figuring it out you know what's so interesting there's one thing about having a need and being creative and fulfilling an idea and it's also a danger uh you know as i work with so many different entrepreneurs and those They'll come to me with a great idea, and it is. I will tell you, I see so many great ideas, but what makes you both so unique is the ability, you mentioned the word follow through, but it's not really execution. And I love the fact that Cameron kind of picked up on the fact that you were the boss, like your situational knowledge experience, I'm sure the dummy tax that you paid in order to facilitate so many successes. And once you've been able to have execution and follow through, the statistical success of a great idea enhances immensely exponentially in fact i believe that good ideas with great entrepreneurs like you catherine uh will be successful but then you combine what i call a bug light you know i'm blessed to have hall of fame quarterback Warren, who was my partner i ran the steinberg the sports agency and i really elevated or escalated the product solutions and services that we work with by using this bug light 
and people think it's easy to attract someone like Cameron to your product service. In fact, we all know how many people now go, oh, if Cameron Diaz just endorsed my product, if Kim Kardashian just posted my post, I would be a billionaire. It's really not that simple or easy. Yeah. More importantly, Cameron, what are the, the uh, skills and the knowledge that Catherine had that attracted you? Because obviously you have many opportunities to endorse and to partner with multiple people. What were some of those skills and capabilities that you saw in Catherine? Well, you know, it, it is funny. It's, I'm not an endorser. I don't really do endorsements. I haven't really had any, um, I've always just sold my own product, which was movies for the longest time and then books um, that I did. And then this product is, you know, because it's Catherine and mine together, um, she didn't bring me onto it. It was really born completely out of our, the two of us connecting on something and then finding that we uh, were both passionate about it because, you know, it's, it's one of those things. And I think that this is what Catherine's so wonderful at is that she does, um, she sees not only was it just a personal need for us, but her, her experience as an entrepreneur went, wait a second, nobody's thinking about this right now. You know, nobody's addressing this exact need for this exact consumer. And um, we should, we, it should be us because we really understand this consumer with what I bring to the table, with what she brings to the table. We both understood who this consumer was and she had this tools toolbox that she's been um you know really you know collecting these tools and and you know upgrading them as we she's gone with her career and really making use of you know all of the technologies and engagement and um you know the community driven aspects of her 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 other um you know, um, businesses. I just saw how keyed in and locked in she was to those communities and how authentic it was and how she as, um, she as a consumer, but her as an entrepreneur, she really, really cared about the products that she was bringing her, um, her consumers. And you can look at them. They're not, you know, they're so inclusive who what where is a zero to plus plus size you know um affordable clothing at target totally accessible for all women all shapes and sizes really beautiful trendy designs that women want but can't afford otherwise um she, her skincare line is you know her her no ingredients list is like you know <laughs> more than is usually what is on the list of for everybody else's, you know, uh, uh, products that are going to market and they do it, they're, they're create, they're taking care of the issues with that's needed in the, the skincare, but it's clean and it's affordable at a drugstore price. So when you look at somebody who goes after um, or wants to provide for a large swath of consumers and is not exclusive and wants to be inclusive. For me, that's like everything. Like, I don't want to be exclusive. I don't want to tell, I don't want to create a product that's only for one person. I want it to be for everyone. Um, so that was really where I think we kind of are, the spirit was part of the spirit of this so that we, every conversation we were talking about, how can we make this inclusive? How can we create a community around this, you know, product that people are going to understand it's for them and it's theirs. Yeah, and Aveline is affordable. Um, Catherine, it, it's interesting too, you know, it's always remarkable, an entrepreneur like you, where huge companies, billion dollar industry, how do they miss, you know, having a line? You know, it seems to me, it's like CBD. They have tried to infuse yeah. CBD into every single product I've ever seen. My office is filled with samples of people trying for yeah. me to promote these. I get, thank goodness, I get free wine all the time as well. Some great celebrities endorsing vodkas and wine. I had Dan Aykroyd with his great vodka. Uh, but it's amazing when I sit there and think, come on, you two are having a glass of wine and somehow you figured out nobody has organic wine and then facilitate this extraordinary idea yes i mean i think you know there are organic wines out there right and there are organic you know vineyards and i think 
the disconnect has been around the transparency and the connection and understanding of the consumer. So, you know, when we set out on this journey, we did not know about wine. We did not know about the winemaking process. We're the first to admit that. But, you know, what we lack in expertise in that area, we, we know the consumer. We know the consumer really well. And I think the, you know, traditional wine brands have not been able to keep up with this consumer in the way that, you know, a lot of other categories of business, frankly, have like, you know, beauty or fashion. Um, and so we saw that as a real opportunity um, because it's not, you know, just something where you can go hire a big consulting firm, you know, to help you figure it out. It starts, you know, it, you have to integrate it into your culture. Um, this idea of having, you know, this always on conversation with your community, having one on one conversations with them to truly understand their needs. I mean, something as simple as, you know, the when we went to create Aveline, which, you know, is a clean uh, wine made from organic grapes with no added sugars, colors, concentrates, as you know, is, is often added to to commercial wine. Um, you know, we did a big research project uh, around the whole concept from, you know, online surveys to shop alongs at retailers, focus groups, and something simple that we understood was that the consumer, this modern consumer who's spending, you know, the, the majority of money around wine and continues to become the biggest part of the market, um, is really looking for different things than that on the label than what the traditional wine brands are giving her. So, you know, she's, she doesn't need to know the, you know, the vintage or the, um, you know, about the terroir. She really wants to know, is this made from organic grapes? You know, is it, does it have any added sugar? She wants to know, does it fit in with her lifestyle? Is this a brand I can connect with? And I think aesthetically, when you look at our brand, Aveline, you'll see the difference in how we're speaking to the consumer. So that, that's really, I think, where the disconnect was for the industry. You guys have such a great specialty of what I call owning the customer. When I'm looking at investing in companies, I look for partnerships or people that really own that community. And every time you have an answer, it's specific to the community or owning the customer. And both of you through the various careers and successes you've had, that audience is synergistic. But yet, you know, partnerships, I have a great saying about partnership. He's an entrepreneur. He always told me, uh, rules of partnership. Number one, never go into a partnership. Uh, two, if you do go into a partnership, make sure your partner has more money than you. Uh, and three, <laughs> if you don't listen to rule one or two, go back to rule number one. Um, I feel the energy between you two. Yeah, really. You, you, you sometimes when you get the partners, you can almost feel the tension between the two partners, and instead of the symbiotic synergy and supplemental thoughts that they're having and co-promotion. I love the fact that when I ask Catherine the questions, she's promoting Cameron and promoting Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Like a marriage, it, it can't be perfect. Uh, for advice for the entrepreneurs out there, what are some of either the mindset or the challenges with any partnership, even when you two look you know, so yeah. close and positive together, you know, what are some of the great advice you can give for that mindset? I think, you know, first of all, having a partner is so much better than not having a partner. Um, oh, if, yeah. you can, if you can find your match, you know? Um, I guess like a marriage, right? So, you know, it is much easier and much more fun to go through a lot of this together. The good times, the bad times. I've had a very successful partnership with my co-founder and Who, What, Where over the last 14 years, who coincidentally has a birthday one day away from Cameron's, and I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> um, I know how to work with a Virgo. But, uh, you know, I think- I married a Virgo, so I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I think the key really when it comes to partnership is being aligned on the mission, but having a very different skill set. So, um, you know, what Cameron is really strong at, um, which is, you know, the, the actual process of the winemaking. She's a great, you know, educator and a great student. She's incredibly detail oriented. She gets granular. She doesn't miss a single thing. Um, the storytelling, you know, obviously she's, you know, uh, everyone loves, she's such a lovable person where I'm kind of like, okay, 
what's the gross margin? How can we improve it? And you know, what's the cheapest way to get the product to the United States? So it's, it's very different skill sets, yet we're very aligned on this mission to, to bring cleaner wine out into the world. That's awesome. I mean, Cameron, for you, for you, you know, I have this with my business partner. People kind of overlook the fact of how involved, educated, like serious, like he is my master for Warren Moon. He's the majesty of calmness, the lessons, because to be the best in the world is something, and you know, not to suck up too much. But you're one of the greatest actors of all time. Like right? you're, you're the best, and so to nice be that, though, people just they discount it, right? It's like when Brad Pitt was on Letterman, and he's like, "Yeah, but you're so good looking. That's why you're successful." And Brad Pitt said, "You know how many good looking people there are in the world? I'm a great actor." Um, and what I find is when people have uh, this spirit of excellence. Uh, which obviously Catherine has proven in the entrepreneurial world, that it really carries over into every single thing that they do, that they're hyper detailed, that they you know, can't sleep at night because they have to get it done. They, they have what I call a common denominator that you must be what you can be. Um, what do you find is your most complimentary skill set to Catherine's obviously you know, experience, situational knowledge that she has in owning this community and distributing it to it? Well, I think that we both have the same mindset um, that there's never uh, a problem. There's always a solution yeah. to whatever the challenge is, you know, and we came up against when we, when we say we knew nothing about this <laughs> process in the alcohol industry, if you have any knowledge of how the alcohol industry works, it's very, very challenging. There's a, you come up against a lot of regulations on a federal level, on a state level. And so we um, really kind of learned as we went, we took meetings with every person who would sit down with us, whether they were in the wine or the spirit world. And um, we really just tried to understand how to bring this product to market. And there was a lot of challenges and we continue to go through find new ones i can i can't even imagine how there's more but <laughs> there are um, but every time we right i mean every time we just kind of go okay so how are we gonna how are we gonna make this work and we i think we have respect for one another's um instincts we both have the same instincts there's never a time i i can't think really of a time where um you know, I, we tried to overrule one another with our your what we thought was the right thing to do. We can always see each other's side because, and I respect so much her experience and her, her gut. And I think she respects mine. And so we are always talking about these things as a solution. There's no ego involved. There's no, like, I have to be right in this. It's like, what's the best thing for Aveline? How do we make this work? And what is it that we both have to understand new to both of us? And then for me, a lot of times was to just go like, to, to defer to Catherine's experience as an entrepreneur to say, you know, what, what should, what's the best result? How do we get the best result? What, how, what do we have to do for the best outcome? And, um, you know, that's just where I get to learn. That's where I just get to go like, oh, I understand. Um, and, you know, watch her do her, her magic. Um, so I don't have any ego in this. I don't really have to be where, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, you know, I, I think of also like, when we went on our trip to Europe, <laughs> you know, I'm sort of like the logistics person, you know, Catherine's like, how do we get there? You know, <laughs> it's sort of like, I'm a logistics person and she's like the, you know, the scheduling, uh, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And then I, I'm like, this is how we're going to get there. And then when we're there, we were literally carrying my bags to the airport to get <laughs> to the door faster. <laughs> I was like, I saw this because I'm like, no. <laughs> I was I'm like kind of like a pack mule I am like a freaking Sherpa I can just carry as many bags it doesn't matter it's like if there's 30 I got them <laughs> oh, like, let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'm the opposite. I don't like get, get all the easy jet 
Um, I don't anybody bring any baggage. I'm, I'm like eight over ten of time freak. You can't bring any bags. Oh no, these are just like we're in Europe for like four days, and we've just got what we can throw on our bag. But we did EasyJet, and EasyJet was not easy at all. It was on the <laughs> another terminal. We had to run across like the entire airport, plus get through the security, plus run fourteen gates. It was just like we almost barely made our flight. But yeah. that's being said, um, we, you know, when we're at the vineyards and we're there with you know our uh, our potential partners you know our um you know I, i'm like she said i'm connecting with the the soil with the grapes with the farming and the farming process and the winemaking process and you know the storage and the cobs and all of the things that you know the wine itself the process of it and she's going okay so What's your X seller? How do we like get to that? What does it include? All the things that we're, she needs. And then, and literally just doing the math wherever we're at, I'm going, we got to get on this freeway. We got to get on that high. We got to take this exit. And she's like on the back of an envelope, like doing like full on. <laughs> she's like, so what we need to do is. Or like not <laughs> really cutting off at that, at that exit. Exactly, you know, so we're, we're both, we're, we're getting, we're both getting us there with, with like different skill sets, you know, so. Just to, fin to finish up, I would be amiss if I didn't ask for your best moral advice, Catherine, obviously with your great successes, if you could share, especially I have three teenage daughters that I love more as a female perspective is fine with me. Just, if you were speaking to my three teenage daughters, what advice would you give them, entrepreneurial advice? And then Cameron will finish with you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, find something you love to do and then figure out a way to get paid for it. So I think when you when you come at it from that direction, um, you, you will be set up for a very fulfilling career. Love it. I think that's the perfect advice. Honestly, I, I would give that same advice. You should never feel like you're working. And work should never feel like you're getting paid for what you love. You'll never feel like you're working. So like when I'm making a movie, I'm not getting paid to act. I'll spend months on end working, doing, you know, 12 hour days, 18 hour days. But what they pay me for is the press. So. <laughs> and they got to pay me a lot of money to do that press. You know what I'm talking about, David? Thank you for doing that. <laughs> I, I tell my girls, there's activity I get paid for and activity I don't and learn to love because you two both have had extraordinary success and I've been blessed as well. And I tell people, I think my biggest mindset blessing is the ability to find the light, the love and the lessons and all the suck that exists in everybody's careers. So you, you and I both know that they look at where you have finished and go, oh, I want to be Catherine. I want to be Dave. I want to be Cameron but they don't realize how much you know, the same percentage of suck exists in our lives. We're just really good at finding the light, the love and the lessons and figuring out how to get as much activity you can get paid for as we can. <laughs> yes, exactly. It. That's why yes. you find that balance, you know, making the movies is the joy, the press is the hard part. And this so far, you know, we've, I think the joy has been to have a finished product and have it received by our community that we made it for and have them really appreciate it, you know, um, and know that we made it for them and we understood them and we took the time to create this for them because it didn't exist before in this way. Our, uh, the way that we're giving it to them, the way that we are speaking to them, they understand and that's very gratifying. Yeah, it's available in over 43 states, I think now. So everybody go out grab it, give it a try, it's even close to as good as these two extraordinary people. You can't go wrong. And it's affordable, by the way. So, Aveline Wine, thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Catherine. It's thank such you, a pleasure. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Great to speak with you. Great to speak fun. with you. Dave Meltzer, Entrepreneur's The Playbook. <laughs>